to talk about uh, my previous video, episode 8, where I tried to do the inverse square law experiment. Um, I uh, wanted to redo that again more carefully because I realized um, there's other sources of energy in, my, in the room I was using. There's uh, fluorescent lights on the ceiling, and um, so my measurements m may have been uh, funky. Um, so I was trying to do it again yesterday, and I, I quickly realized that um, what's going on with the measurements uh, when you when the distances start to get larger is um, um, yes, you have a nice linear uh, relationship of uh, distance to one over the square root of power um, until some threshold, and then uh, that threshold we could call this like the near field and the far field, and it, once you cross into that far field area. Uh, the the uh, measurements that you get out here are really uh, subject to what's going on in the room. Um, if I was uh, standing between the plate and the um, and the uh, energy source, uh, my body actually uh, uh, would provide better power transfer. Also, if you were to put like a measuring tape that's metal down on the floor between the two objects the metal uh, uh, tape serves as a transmission line also so like and uh, and there's also like reflections and this and that in the room so um, uh, so although inverse square law would predict a straight line it's not really that's just a mathematical uh, concept and it's not really what happens in reality in reality you you cross some threshold and, and then uh, other things come into play, and this re very much reminds me of um, of the concept of chi, where where um, human beings can come in and influence the electromagnetic fields by intent, by just walking in and uh, positioning their body a certain way and uh, reflecting reflecting energies and so forth. Also, I noticed that if, uh, uh, I was sitting and doing measurements, and I had to walk the dog. I went and walked the dog and came back, and all my measurements changed because my metabolism in my body had changed. So this is a really, th this device that converts AC to DC using germanium um, tra uh, diodes is very, very sensitive uh, and, and can see all these subtle energies, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, I figured out how to uh, find uh, the resonant frequency, and I'll show you that.
Um, I tried some other frequencies. Uh, uh, one of the viewers told me about these uh, Salvaggio frequencies, which are really low frequencies, and they're too low for my coil. My coil is uh, 660 kilohertz or so. So I have a thought experiment for you guys. Um, here's the formula for wavelength. It's velocity over frequency, and and what wavelength is is you know um, the distance between uh, the two peaks of a cycle, or, or basically how big a cycle is. Um, okay, so if the speed of light in copper is 95% of the speed of light in a vacuum, uh, here's the thought experiment. Um, if we have a cone-shaped coil, as the wave enters the base of that coil and starts proceeding down the coil, do we expect frequency to change, or do we expect velocity to change? as it approaches the apex. Um, I have no way of answering that question. That is a thought experiment for you physicists out there. Um, but there's seems like there's two possibilities. Either the frequency shifts, like a Doppler effect, or the velocity changes as if there was a gradual medium change in the copper. Even though it's the copper isn't changing. Uh, all we are doing here is changing distance. So uh, a cone-shaped coil, I'm wondering if it has relativistic properties. 